Okay. So, I think we just start. Um, yes, um, I have the honor to talk about uh, our uh, real-world experience with uh, the VMware integration in OpenMS. Uh, who of you guys tried the VMware integration? Who was able to get it to work? Who was not able to get it to work? Okay, that's good. So, uh, if nobody raises a hand, then I can leave the room. So. <laughs> um, yeah, first, um, my talks are normally on uh, not OpenMS conference, so I have always to make a disclaimer about uh, when I talk about OpenMS. So, the exits are here and here, so <laughs> and it's there. Um, yeah, just uh, normally there's a short thing about me, but instead of talking about me, I would talk a little bit about our guy, Ulf. Um, yeah, it's our mascot. It's a kind of a nerd. He likes El Cars displays on coffee machines. He likes Club Marty. Uh, he likes to play hide and seek. <laughs> <laughs> He's pretty curious and has no fear for anything. Uh, this is a North uh, football soccer uh, team, and he likes to travel. So that was a trip to Uganda, and he we took it also to a conference like the Linux conference, and um, we had this um, funny idea to make the hide and seek game in Mobile, but unfortunately he fell behind it, so it's a little bit dirty. <laughs> <laughs> And he <coughs> is not able to fly, so he has some issues with flying. <laughs> some people here are under 18. He's a womanizer, he likes nice women. And he likes free software, so pretty much the same thing like we did. And he is able to make really strange friends. <laughs> <laughs> okay. First of all, I'll give a short introduction how the VMware integration works. Um, for the guys who are not really familiar with it. Um, then I will talk a little bit about what kind of issues we had um, for, um, for the integration. Mainly uh, Jeff and Taurus and all the guys who are doing uh, the hard uh, work uh, in front of the customer, um, reporting stuff back and if we, uh, when we started uh, implementing that feature we had a really nice small environment with just a few host systems on really, we got it to work in, in their environment, and then uh, the real world is something different. Most. Then I will try explain a little bit why is it sometimes complicated, just to figuring out what kind of pitfalls you have to take care about, and um, the results of this kind of uh, experience we had to put on a roadmap what we can do <coughs> to make that stuff a little bit better. Okay, first of all, as an introduction, uh, what is the VMware integration is doing for you? So basically, she synchronized the uh, vCenter inventory into OpenMS. The same similar thing, uh, like Mar uh, Marcus explained, uh, integrating your inventory, whatever, in, in, in OpenMS for provisioning. So we can go uh, asking a vCenter, give me all your ESX host machines, all your virtual machines, and import them into um, OpenMS. You have a little bit of control over the import. You have a kind of filter to say, OK, I want to just have powered on virtual machines imported, or um, even if you have customized attributes in the vCenter set. Uh, on the virtual machine or the ESX host, you can filter on that kind of attributes. What it also does is it provides you the possibility in CollectD to measure all long-term performance metrics from the virtual machine and from the ESX host. And then you can also have kind of all the service assurance uh, thing from the ESX host. You can query the ESX host, give me your health status as a monitor. So normally you have in the vCenter kind of a health state. It's a summarization of all the sensor states. And this is exactly what we have um, uh, for uh, as a, a polo and a monitor for it. And additionally, we uh, put in a kind of um, 
topology uh, implementation. So during the import, we can build up the topology fro from the from the vCenter and can build it in the new topology UI, what, uh, what uh, David uh, talked about in the keynote. Okay, um, a little bit more in detail how it technically um, works or what the kind of flow is. Um, all the authentication stuff is handled by um, the vCenter, so you have vCenter as your central point as authentication for all ESX hosts you have uh, in, in the vCenter domain and even for the virtual machines. And we have to detect or to have, we have to figure out somehow what is the management interface for the ESX host system. That is a really important part because all the sensor metrics are queried directly from the ESX host system, but I come to that point a little bit later. And all the VMware related topology information is stored in just one big asset field because currently we had at this time no place or no storage for a topology information so we misused uh, a new asset field a little bit like that for, for this use case. Okay, how it looks like we have just our OpenMS running, we have a vCenter instance and here's our virtual machine. Basically, we talk with the vCenter over HTTPS. We talk to the SDK, there's a SDK um, uh, interface. Um, all this stuff is um, HTTPS on port A443. And between vCenter and the virtual machine, it's all internal VMware stuff, so we don't have any influence on that stuff. Um, what we are doing over the, the, the connection to the vCenter, we have created a VMware collector which does the data collection for uh, the virtual machines and the uh, ESX host systems. These data are uploaded from the virtual machine to the vCenter in a regular basis. It's the stuff what you see in a vCenter if you have these uh, graphs for um, the memory or CPU or disk or something like that. And we have also created a kind of a monitor. Uh, I think we, we just had one possibility or we just thought we have one use case really uh, found which makes somehow sense is if you, if you have um, imported all virtual machines and somebody powers them off then you get a service down if somebody turned it off if you have no IP access to the, to the virtual machine so it is possible to monitor the virtual machines without any IP access so you have a kind of uh, availability of the virtual machine. Sometimes they, it is used in um, separated networks. If you have more zones or different uh, network uh, zones where OpenMS is not able to reach the IP, the, pub, the IP address from the virtual machine, then you have a kind of uh, possibility to monitor if the machine is powered on or off. How does it look like in OpenMS if you import one? We create basically a node for a virtual machine. We create an IP interface and we assign two funny named services to it. One is a VMware virtual machine to indicate it's a, it's a virtual machine and a, a VMware managed entity. That means basically it is um, any kind of um, system in vCenter is called a VMware managed entity. To get the IP interface, it is important VMware tools are required. Without VMware tools, you are not able to get the IP address from the virtual machine. We have a similar kind of issue, um, or we tried a little bit with KVM. We have exactly the same thing. It is quite hard to figure out the IP address inside a, a host system, so the VMware tools provide that for us. Um, the uh, VMware tools fr uh, directly from VMware work and also the open VM tools if you make an upget install <coughs> in Ubuntu. So you need to install the open system? You have to install the VMware tools in the virtual machine. Right. They have to be running. But I think normally ev everyone who has a, a virtual machine instance running because they have all this funny memory management thing. Make it more efficient. And um, what we bound to these two interfaces is um, on the VMware virtual machine, we bound the uh, collect D. 
to get all the performance metrics and we assigned, we created a, a monitor in PolarD. And what the um, data collector did is just get all KPIs, all performance indicators from the virtual machine provided by the vCenter and create all these RD files. And the monitor for a virtual machine just tests is the power state on and that's, that's everything. For a host system it's a little bit different. We have this funny connection for the communication path. We need two special communication paths. One is the uh, communication to the vCenter <coughs> and then for we need additionally directly access to the ESX host. And what we do from the to the co uh, on the communication to the vCenter, we just um, can collect all the metrics the vCenter knows about the ESX host system. That is bas basically all the gen generic information about um, memory, CPU usage, something like that. And for the monitor, we build a monitor to, to monitor this health state that's aggregated in the vCenter. To get access to the host system, we have to ask the vCenter for an authentication ticket. So OpenMS queries the vCenter, give me an authentication ticket to allow me to talk with all your ESX host machines. And then we are able to um, use a different SIM monitor and a SIM data collector which queries the ESX host system directly about the hardware sensors like uh, um, the CPU temperature, fan, disks, everything which is directly related to the ESX host system. And that's only we have to query the ESX host system directly. And that's a little bit the tricky part here. If you have a host system with a lot of interfaces for um, storage or um, separate networks which are not reachable from OpenMS, uh, then it's exactly the trick to figure out what, what is the interface where we communicate with the ESX host system to get this data collected and monitored. Okay, questions so far? Um, we build it on the vCenter appliance, okay. so that where we the integration started, okay. that works. Yeah. And in real world, uh, we have seen <coughs> most of them have it running on Windows. Okay. So I think there is th there could be maybe a difference uh, between the two. There shouldn't be a difference. That's the yeah, that's uh, there shouldn't theory. be, but <laughs> in theory, right? Yeah. No, that's completely a different one, yeah. Okay. How does a uh, host system look like in OpenMS? Yeah, we just also create a node for each ESX host system. We assign a service called VMware host system. During the import, we create a VMware sim host system service and also the managed entity because that's the generic um, uh, unique um, or the generic um, identificator in, in vCenter. This is how we assigned um, the polar and collect uh, D to the services. For the VMware host system we have a data collection and we have a VMware sim host system which is the data collection for all the sensors. So VMware host system collect all the data from the vCenter what the vCenter knows about exactly this uh, ESX uh, system and the VMware SIM uh, host system collects all the specific hardware sensor data from the system itself. Okay, so that's basically what we do here. We have um, 
assigned to the v VMware SIM host system um, also a monitor which makes exactly the service status of the uh, which monitors the service status for the health of the system <coughs> and we can also query uh, if the ESX hosted is turned on or off or is powered on or po powered off you can query the same thing uh, for a virtual machine and a host system so you can we assign the service as well um, the tricky part is uh, we create we use uh, asset fields to assign the internal information um, to communicate with the vCenter to get exactly this kind of um, to get the correct information for each each node so basically in the uh, on every um, imported VMware machine you find a VMware managed object ID that is the internal identifier in vCenter so every time you create a new virtual machine you add a new ESX host system it becomes an internal VM identifier and every time we query uh, information from the vCenter we have to tell them this is the internal ID we want to have the, all the information about so we don't need any kind of or we don't need um, direct access to the virtual machine over IP. Um, yeah, then we store that it's a, um, the type, what kind of machine it is, uh, that's an, a virtual machine. And the second one is, this is the IP address, which vCenter is responsible for this virtual machine or this host system. So if you have an environment with more than one virtual uh, vCenter running, then you have maybe an overlapping with uh, via, uh, internal VMware IDs because that's every domain has its own uh, key so <coughs> they can overlap and to that OpenMS knows that we have maybe more than one virt V centers running you can uh, we have to save that information as well okay <coughs> what kind of issues we had running uh, in larger environments um, the first problem we had or we figured out was uh, detecting the service on the host system in VMware 3 and 4 it was able it was possible to query the console NIC interface there was a pretty good chance that this is the IP address from the ESX host system um, to get access uh, to it from uh, from OpenMS but they changed it in VMware 5 so it is not possible anymore to figure out what is the interface from an ESX host <coughs> to communicate to getting all the, the SIM, SIM queries. Um, that uh, make made uh, the, the stuff a little bit, bit trickier and we figured out also that there are kind of different um, behaviors if you have uh, on the vCenter a local user created or you have uh, authentication against LDAP, uh, Microsoft Active, Active Directory, something. So there might be issues with Active Directory side if you have problems in Active Directory domain environment, which you can figure out with DCDR, something like that. Then you have side effects on the vCenter side in OpenMS. That could make <coughs> things a little bit tricky. And I know, uh, I think Jeff uh, spent also or had also some kind of sometimes strange is issues if you put in the, um, the domain name in front of the credentials for AD or removing them. That's uh, it's a little bit, uh, could be a tricky thing. Yes? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, that's a really important point because we had some issues yeah. exactly in that in that area. Yeah. 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 Okay. That we have to look up. That's a really important point because we run exactly in this kind of yeah. issues. Yeah. That's exactly the feedback we need. Perfect. Um, 
Yes, um, that is basically um, the main things we run into. Um, if we look in the code, we just, um, that's the kind of the algorithm was, or the flow, what happens if you uh, import an ESX host system. And um, yeah, we start with an empty requisition. We query the vCenter, give me all your host systems. And then you go for each host system, you get all IP addresses. And then we do something we detect if we are able to communicate on this IP address with the VMware SIM host system. So we make a, try to make a connection to that IP address. <coughs> so that's direct, that bypasses the user, that's directly to the host. That is directly to every IP address on the ESX host system for each ESX host system. So it's kind of... Even if they're not reaching it. Yes, then we have a timeout for three seconds to wait. And that is most the thing why the, I the import or the requisition takes pretty long, or can what take pretty long. What does the detect service do? Um, the detect service uh, tries to get one, uh, tries to just retrieve one uh, a numeric sensor metric from this host system. If it's able to get a numeric metric back, then we know we can communicate using to it. That SIM yeah, right. We're using exactly a, a SIM call. So he tries to make a SIM, a SIM call for a numeric metric. If we get one, we assign the service. If not, we go to the next <coughs> base and try it again. Just curiosity, does every time you check, does it require authentication? Yes. So all all API calls. The VI Java doesn't build that in, in this way. Yes, and that's exactly the critical part. So we have uh, that is uh, directly in provision D integrated. So if you run that, that, that is code which uh, runs inside the URL requisition in provision D. Um, Yes, and that is uh, how the communication looks like if you have L LDAP uh, integrated. So the vCenter talks additionally to the ADS. And you have um, exactly the kind of um, um, issue figuring out what kind of authentication you want to have. You want to have a local user or LDAP user. So. Yeah, detecting the uh, management interface is one issue. The second one is we the data collection is by default configured to collect every metric which is available on the virtual machine and on the host system. So by default, you have the full set of KPIs pre-configured. That could be an issue in really big environments, but um, we thought up front it's easier to delete configuration to instead of creating configuration. So be careful in big environments because the default is we collect every data we get, can get. Um, the second thing is the measurements <coughs> for sensors are a little bit tricky. Um, we had to look that up in the VMware documentation. They have a kind of a strange um, behavior to um, provide the, the uh, metrics for, for the sensors. So you have to calculate them first. So you have basically two values. You become uh, the sensor reading value and you have a base uh, unit value. You have to modify the base uh, of the, 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 the measured value. So, for example, you have. Um, I can show you that here in the. So you have a. Uh, um, You 
You find here in the VMware AP a documentation about all the performance metrics you can you can get, you can uh, retrieve, and there is um, oh I put a link in the slide I remember <coughs> this one here yeah, is it. Um, so we have two values, it's a base unit and a unit modifier, so we have a sensor reading and we have to read additionally uh, the base unit and the unit modifier and if you uh, read something like um, a value like uh, maybe 5, then you have to uh, calculate the value first with 10 to the power of the unit modifier and then you get exactly the value. So that was a little bit tricky to in implement in RD2. <laughs> we tried, but we failed. <laughs> and so basically what we figured out, what was really hard is, yeah, we depend on the VI Java library for all the communication to the vCenter. We have different versions of vCenters running which behave differently. The underlying OS uh, is sometimes or can play a uh, kind of a role um, if you have the vCenter running on Linux or Windows. <coughs> like you uh, explained the vCenter appliance or uh, the Windows installed one. Uh, authentication, authentication methods playing a role in that stuff. The ESX host operating system, what kind of build number you have running on the ESX host because this is the point where we have to talk with uh, the sim queries against it. And we have currently kind of uh, issues if every API call requires the authentication thing against the vCenter. Yes, and you have maybe side effects from non-perfect running ADS setups, something which leak over then in the vCenter environment. Um, from the OpenMS point of view, what do we have under control to address all these issues? Um, so basically we implement the third-party libraries. So we have control over how we do uh, the implementation. We can uh, make changes on the algorithm, how we import stuff, like uh, the thing with the detecting things. So there's a lot of... Uh, there are things we can, can definitely improve. Um, we can cha make changes to the performance data collection, how we read the performance data, and even yeah, how we want to model the workflow to import um, the nodes. So how all that looks like in reality. Um, we built for um, calculating the sensor readings a special feature branch which makes the calculation for um, the sensor readings directly in the data collection code. So collect D will spit out the correct calculated value. So you have in RD the, the correct value. Um, the, call, uh, the feature branch in OpenMS is uh, called a feature VMware metrics. So if you want to give that one, uh, you want to try um, this uh, special feature for sensor readings, then Currently, we have to go to this feature branch right now. And we need kind of feedback and testing for exactly the sensor stuff. And the second thing is um, moving the import to deal with the import for uh, all the ESX and uh, vCenter hosts in the inventory integration service uh, Marcus talked about up front to have it a little bit easier to deal with uh, um, things like uh, how you want to filter or how you want to model your vCenter environment in, in OpenMS. What we also need, because we have a lot of external dependencies, we have to improve diagnostic tools like uh, Microsoft builds DC Diag to get uh, information about how your Active Directory works. We need a similar thing to figure out how is the uh, uh, communication between OpenMS and, and the vCenter. Um, 
we started to improve the graphing. I don't know who of you tried the graphs and they are completely not usable, right? Because it's just default generated graphs right now. So we started also a feature branch uh, to improve all the gra graphs. So we have for VMware 5 now all uh, nice graphs with uh, meaning and something um, for um, the uh, VMware 5 environment. The sensor graphs are still missing because we don't have it right now in a, in a master branch. Um, what we need right now or what we don't have right now is we don't have a detector so we have to move out from the provisioning daemon this detector behavior to um, provision D detector. This piece of code has to go to a detector so we can leverage from the multi-threaded environment in provision D and get, uh, remove this piece of code from the import step. And what would be also pretty nice if we have this feature branch in Bamboo, um, uh, our continuous integration system, then we have <coughs> the possibility to build YAM and Debian packages from exactly this feature branch and you can use a Vagrant environment to, to run this little feature or try this feature. Um, anybody familiar with the uh, with Vagrant or the Vagrant box in OpenMS? You did? How does it work for you? Was it, was it okay? Yeah? Um, we're in the process of uh, getting into our project, so yeah. Yeah. What we, what you can basically do is, um, we have, um, we have built a kind of a, a vacant box for OpenMS. So if you want to try uh, feature branches, then you can. Um, uh, you can check out a vagrant box which is available here in, in the OpenMS uh, Forge repository and you can say what kind of flavor, what kind of version you want to have in OpenMS so you just configure I want to have a stable, I want to have a testing and the cool thing is you can put in also here uh, branches slash and then the branch name and it will bring up a virtual machine with exactly and install the, the branch uh, version for you uh, from the RPM repository. So that's a pretty easy way to just try and test stuff with OpenMS locally and you don't have to worry about um, yeah, getting all that stuff compiled or something. So this is uh, definitely worth a try. So I can show you a little bit about uh, some stuff we have um, done with the graphing because that is also kind of interesting um, to us. Just take this one. The re resolution is pretty nice. So yeah, just. So you query pretty much uh, a lot of metrics, it's a virtual machine. And what we built with the, um, with the graph improvement feature was to build exactly this kind of descriptions, what is the data store, highest latency, memory actively used and all that stuff. So they are now um, pretty much um, completely re rebuilt uh, from the uh, VMware documentation so we oriented on the VMware uh, performance documentation to build this kind of graphs. What interesting is to us which, which metrics make sense in a default configuration because as I said we collect everything in the default configuration. So all the metrics we, uh, we can receive we will collect uh, And um, that basically ends up in 
In the data collection, you see here for VMware 3, you have um, for every version from VMware, you have uh, tons of metrics we collect by default. So you can do a lot of stuff here. Okay, so that is uh, really one, one point where we would really interested in getting feedback uh, about interesting KPIs for VM environments. Okay. So what else do we have? We have um, some kind of tools to um, bypass a little bit the provision D issue. So Alejandro wrote an extension um, to run the VMware integration on the command line. So if you go into the OpenMS uh, bin directory, you have a VMware rec tool, which gives you exactly the output what provision D would see if you connect to a vCenter. So we have a kind of a real-time uh, experience to see what what uh, are the what why does it take so long to import the requisition or something like that. You can also add the filters on this uh, URL. So if you make a question mark import o host only equals true, then you will only get uh, DSX host systems. Or there are different more in the provision DL ex in the provision DXML. There is a is a whole example of filters you can uh, use even for the customized attributes. So look at the provision D uh, configuration. There's a good example what kind of filter you can use here. Uh, the second thing is also in the bin directory. It is the VMware sim query tools. Yeah, so you can try to query um, the sim uh, communication for all your ESX host systems. So as you can see, you just uh, give um, the vCenter IP address, the username and the password, and it will provide you all the sensor readings. So this can give you a little bit of feedback. Um, is the communication working between the OpenMS and the ESX uh, management interfaces, and how long does it take? And there is another one uh, called uh, VMware uh, Connection Diagnostics. That's a tool which just um, gives a little bit more detailed output uh, between the com uh, for the uh, VMware communication, but you <coughs> have to build it on your own. It's not in the repository right now. So um, you have here, a, that's the link um, of the source repository, and then you can, you have to make a Maven clean, clean install, and then you have to run the, um, the jar by your own. What you basically configure, you configure a config.properties where you put in all the information for the vCenter and it spits out kind of uh, output what kind of uh, networks you have on the ESX host system, what OpenMS sees and how to um, identify unreachable IP addresses maybe and what kind of power state do we have and things like that. That's all this, this thing. And um, it gives you also the uh, information kind of uh, which uh, if you have vCenter running on Linux or on Windows. And I think this is the kind of information which helps if you open issues in, in, um, in Jira so we can try to identify which is there somehow relation between underlying OSs or to figure out what kind of problem we have or what we have to uh, to address uh, with bug fixing or improvements. So this is the kind of uh, additional information which helps to, to identify maybe strange problems with external libraries. We can not really do something about it or because everyone has a different environment running. Um, the third thing is um, yeah, moving from the integrated URL requisition to the inventory service like Marcus described. The reason is quite simple. We have for provision D just a simple XML to import. Um, we have 
a little bit more flexibility because we are not really strong dependent on the whole monitoring system. So we are a little bit uh, more flexible by uh, dealing with the import. Um, we can free uh, the OpenMS core from all these dirty third-party li li uh, third libraries, and which makes also the testing a little bit easier. And uh, we have a little bit faster iteration for fixing stuff in the, in the import mechanism between OpenMS. Looks a little bit like that. Currently, we have uh, provision D and the VMware integration running. So, um, provision D has all these external dependencies on VI Java and the Sublime library. And um, so, every change you want to make, you have to wait a complete uh, release cycle from OpenMS. So, you have to build the whole thing and you have to release it also. And it's also quite hard to write unit tests against this kind of integration because you don't. You, it's pretty hard to mock uh, behind a third library a system. It's kind of really tricky. And even if you have different version numbers running on different systems and in different setups, it's kind of complicated. So this is the kind of part where we have a little bit less control um, uh, over the implementation and what we do with the integration server is just we move out the dirty parts in a really thin integration thing where you just mod uh, map one model to another one. Yes? So you said you removed the dependency from provision D, but you still yeah. need it for collecting. Yes, that's correct. Yeah. Yes. That's one first step. It would be nice to have the same thing for collect D. Mm -hmm. To get rid of all the technology dependent things uh, which make it really hard just model from one specific domain model in the, in the OpenMS domain model just have this slim thing in, in a re really small part. That's uh, exactly the reason why we try to move it to a small integration <coughs> layer thing. So then we have it have it here we can um, have in provision the standardized API we can rely on. It's a, a standardized model. Um, we can use standardized REST inter interfaces and um, it is also a little bit easier mm -hmm. because we can harden the uh, API much better with uh, integration tests because we have a defined state where we talk to the outside of the world somehow. And um, I think that makes uh, the life uh, a lot easier for for integration. And uh, on the integration layer thing, we can pretty we, we are not depending on other release cycles from other parts in in, in the core. So we have just uh, the integration is just uh, one Ruby file or just one Java file. You can really can quickly iterate over over co over the code. If you have changes in the vCenter environment, there comes vCenter 6, which does other crazy stuff. Then you can just uh, throw in a new new Java library, and you just update this small integration piece, and you don't have to to deal uh, with the ho whole OpenMS code base. Okay. And um, how does it look like? It's pretty much um, similar, like uh, the stuff what Marcus showed. Um, we have that in Pris uh, running. It's a feature branch for VMware source. So um, if you go um, to um, to the repository, which is on the slide, then you will find a feature branch called VMware uh, feature VMware source, and it basically um, allows you to create two sources, one for an ESX host system and one for a guest system. And um, I lost my SSH connection. So it looks like um, the same thing. What we have here, um, we use it in HTTP mode. 
the HTTP mode allows us to get the requisition as just as HTTP output. Support 8000 ESX. So that's basically um, the same thing what uh, Marcus did with an Excel sheet. We have just the ESX connect ESX source behind it. So you can do all the same things what Marcus explained with the Groovy scripting stuff and merging saw things with the VMware source. And um, what um, can have a look in uh, it's this X one. Um, the source looks pretty simple. Um, this one is the implementation. So there is there are two implementations right now: VMware host system and um, the virtual machine source. And then you give the credentials, and here you can add different scri Groovy scripts to modify the requisition before it goes into OpenMS. Um, what a kind of tricky is we have to provide uh, authentication cr credentials twice right now. So you have to configure it here and also in OpenMS for the data collection. <coughs> and yeah, that's pretty much it. Um, so you can point OpenMS with provision D uh, against this URL here and build your requisition you want to have. Or you create it in file, or you run it in file mode, and just create the XML file for you, and then you import it somehow, another other way. Okay. Do you have any questions, ideas? Are you intending to put any options in at the beginning via, say, don't? Yeah. Yeah. Because what? I've, uh, I've, got, I've got a very cut down. Right. Moment, yeah. And it, as you know, it's collecting literally hundreds of it's bases. Yeah. It's right. Briefly, yeah. yeah. And in the real world, the vast majority of them are irrelevant. Yeah. They're right. They're never going to be used. Yeah. Um, so it would be quite useful to have something that says a bit like the um, post-op. Right. They do. Yeah. 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 Yeah, currently the yeah the the metrics are yeah currently it's a, the metrics are defined in the data collect in the collect D configuration, so there's no uh, there's no link between each other. So what you can probably can come up with is um, building um, kind of profiles for. Um, for VMware, so you can build a profile where you can uh, assign surveillance categories to it, yeah. and then you <coughs> can decide based on the surveillance category what kind of data collection profile fits to the the machine. And it's kind of a yeah category-driven uh, workflow, well, but you have to model that or you have to build that up. Yeah. Uh, I but collect everything. Yeah, right. And it's after about six hours, it ran out of the yeah. swapped and it died. Yeah. I came in the following so morning and killed one. Yeah. Yeah. It's, uh, it's uh, pretty much. We, we have a, a tool called uh, VMware Configuration Builder. And what it basically does, it, if it's we, we build it we because we figured out uh, between uh, 3, 4, 4, 1, 4, 5, they changed little things in the uh, in the metrics and in the in the sensors so and we we don't want to go after each version and uh, we don't want to uh, fiddle around with all these small little changes so we just build a tool to say okay build a configuration for me in openmes so just generate the configuration go to that v sender and give me all the data it has and build the a fitting uh, data collection config for me and then you have to decide, okay, I don't need that stuff and just throw throw the things out, right? That's bas basically the idea to make it a little bit easier to implement VMware 6 or 7 or whatever comes next to, to have a way to 
get the, the metrics right. So that's just uh, really it's a it's it's really a basis. Um, what I can tell is uh, in. We track these issues in in Jira, um, and there is one. Maybe that is maybe a good starting point because um, so we have It is exactly this issue here, 6134, which um, deals exactly with, um, it is, uh, it will be in 1.12.6, that's the default graphing, it will re replace the default graphing for the VM VMware 5, and it basically, um, I documented here which kind of metrics I have replaced, so that's maybe a good starting point to figuring out um, what what is uh, maybe a good fit for a default config? Yeah. So um, this is the um, yeah documentation for all metrics which are converted to a human and readable interpretation. And um, you can also go to the brand. You can just have to copy the uh, SNMP graph property files from the GitHub. You can use it also in 1.12.5 or 4. It's no problem. So that is okay. Anything else? Okay, and thank you very much.